Next question comes from Kimura Kid. He goes, what were your thoughts on Mark Kerr during his pride run and the making of the Smashing Machine? And he's also wondering, have you kept in touch with him and how is he doing now? You know, I I, uh, I talked to somebody who spoke to him last uh, last month, mm-hmm. and he said he, he was not doing uh, he was not so doing so well, and, and that, that hurts me because he's a really good guy, man. When you meet him, it's uh, it's, it's impossible not to like this guy, and um, you know. But that, that's that's the example. Boys and girls don't do painkillers, don't do all these uh, the, those drugs, you know, and, and I'm just saying that because Mark Kerr is very open with it, like in the Smashing Machine, you show him, he, he shows himself shooting up, so it's not like he says, oh, please don't say it, because otherwise I wouldn't have said it, of course, but he brought it out in the open uh, himself, so I can talk about that, and I think it's a good example, and I think that documentary is a good example for other fighters as well, you know, I don't know if you guys have those Vikings in Australia, Finally, finally here in America, you know, they, 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 they legalize marijuana and now in a bunch of states. But, you know, so they're, they're a little bit easier on that. Be- before, they didn't want to do it because they don't want you to buy other drugs. They want you to buy their drugs. And their drugs are, well, painkillers. And the painkillers are here in such a way that if you take them for about two, three weeks straight, you know, you, you're going to have a problem getting off these things. You have to literally, you know, start winding down, which is something you can't do because, you know, as you know, your body f- learns how to deal with the, with the substance. So two pills suddenly are not enough anymore. There need to be three pills. As soon three become six and it goes really fast. And then, boom, suddenly you're addicted. All the movie stars, name any, any movie star, even when they do heroin, it started with the pain pills because the painkillers – it's pretty much the same. You go from oxycodone to oxycontin. Oxycontin is pharmaceutical heroin. It's exactly the same. If you shoot up or you take a pill, it doesn't matter. It's the same stuff, you know. And a lot of people they cannot buy the oxycontin anymore because it's so expensive, you know. That's why there's all this crazy stuff going on here. So they go over to heroin because it's cheaper, you know. There was a way. I, I talked to Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben is very open about his addiction as well. And he was on our show and he was talking about this fact that uh, with oxycontin, what people used to do, <clears throat> they crush them and then they can uh, liquefy them and they can shoot them up just like they can do with heroin. Mm. And what OxyContin did, they they put something in the pill that you couldn't do it anymore. 85% of the sales went down when they did that. So now it's back in. You see what I mean? So that means 85% of the people who take OxyContin don't have a problem, pain problem. They take it because recreational users are addicted. So it's a very scary drug, you know. So I'm very happy here with the... With the weed, at least, you know, you don't have these crazy things. You know, let the people smoke a little bit, you know, let them be happy. And, you know, they don't, they don't start robbing people and God knows what other crimes they do in order to get money to pay for their addiction. Yeah, certainly. And obviously, Mark was just a real specimen, a great athlete. And at one point, looked like he was going to be sort of in the top for a really long time. Do you think if he didn't turn towards the pills and obviously had those issues with his wife or his girlfriend back in those days, do you think he could have been one of the all-time greats and possibly we'd be talking about him as one of the ex-champions and someone who was successful later on in his MMA career? Yeah, I I, I think so. I I do not know that when I saw him fight for the first time, it was in the the Valetudo, Extreme Valetudo, World Valetudo Championships in Brazil. And... um, uh, and I don't know if he was in the painkillers then. So I don't know if it was because once he stopped the painkillers, he, 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 his career kind of went south. So it was almost that the painkillers put him, put him in such a f- phase that he was able to fight. Now, if he w- never touched the pain pills, when, when, for instance, that fight in, in, in Brazil, if he wasn't on painkillers there, then for sure he could have been uh, a guy that we would still talk about as one of the greatest. You know, but so, but I I don't know if he if he started his painkillers early and he was always fighting with painkillers. Well, I know what happened when he stopped the painkillers because he couldn't mm. mentally do it anymore. You know, these painkillers they put you in such a phase that some people may I don't know they 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 maybe fight better on them. I don't I don't know it 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 blows me away because it takes all your reaction your your everything away your speed you know your thinking you start thinking so slow it's. Uh, it's crazy. I <clears throat> I realized how bad it was. This is a crazy story. This because I was uh, training at the time. I was training Marco Huas and uh, and Mark Kerr both at the same time. And they had both were fighting in Japan. And I went to Japan with them, and uh, we were uh, training, working out together before the fight. <clears throat> a couple of days before the fight, 
And uh, now I'm rolling with two freaking monsters, you know, like uh, Marco and, uh, and, and Marker. You know, they're much stronger than me and heavier. So I had to put a lot of power in there in what I do. And my tendonitis started acting up. And a tendonitis, once that happens with me, it's a very extremely painful thing, man. It's like that pretty much stopped my career. It's so, so much pain that you almost can't handle. And um, it comes from the inside. And, and I'm sitting there and I go, guys, guys, and I have tears coming out of my eyes. You know, I say, I got to go to the hospital. I'm, uh, you guys keep training. I got to go to the hospital. I got to do something. I, somebody got to give me something. I can't handle this anymore. And, um, and Marco says, no. He packed up all the stuff. And he says, let's go to the hotel. I got something for you. And, uh, and I didn't care anymore. At that moment, I did not care about anything anymore. I just wanted the pain to be away. On the way to the hotel, I'm in freaking pain. You know, the, In my career, I couldn't eat anymore from the pain. So that's mm. how much it hurts. And um, we come up to his room, and he pulls out a bottle and a syringe. <clears throat> and I look at him, and he looks at me. I go, go ahead. You know, uh, I didn't care anymore. And then he, he grabbed my arm, and he shoots me up. He says, five seconds, it'll be away. And he shut me up. And yeah, five seconds, it was away. But I was gone for the whole night. <laughs> I, couldn't, I was slurring my speech. I was sweating profusely. I, I, I wanted to go to dinner with friends. I was sitting there, but I couldn't eat. And I looked at him and said, how can you fight on this? You know, How is that even possible? And he says, well, you, you get used to it, I, I guess. You know, But to me, it, oh, it was like the worst thing I could... You know, you cannot imagine to even step on a treadmill in that situation. So, but that gave him kind of a way with me because I started sweating. And I always asked him, why are you sweating so much? So as soon as I started sweating, I remember I was all like looped up and I look at him and I said, now you gave yourself away. Now I know why you're sweating. So mm -hmm. I want you to stop that stuff. You know, so, but from that moment on, everything went, uh, he was already on his way down. It was a shame. It was a shame to see. I think also the relationship he's in, I think that, you know, you can't blame everybody. You know, they, everybody, it's their own fault. They, they choose to stay with somebody like that. You know, and I, I can't handle that. With me, if there's stress or people shouting at me, then you better stop because once I start shouting, I'll bring it to a whole different level, you know. But I'm, <laughs> I'm not that guy, you know. But yeah. once you go, I will be that guy. If you try to intimidate with yelling people, who would yell. to me, they're such a barking dogs. People who scream at me, I just walk away. I said, yeah, I can't, you know, learn to talk, you know. But yeah. he was in that relationship. He was fighting, fighting. She pulled a gun on him a couple of times. I mean, wow. Who wants to be in a relationship like that? But for some reason, he, you know, he loved her. And uh, I truly believe that that has a lot to do also with the drugs, and uh, I, like I said, I, I don't blame because he takes the drugs and he does that. He does everything himself. I cannot blame anybody else. But I mean, some people, you know, they start turning to think to, to ease it a little bit. Oh, let's take a few Vicodins. You know, I'm a little bit more prepared to all the shouting and all the stress in the house. You know, so I don't know. But uh, mm. drugs, man, it, stay away from it far. I always tell this to fighters. When the amateur fighters, sometimes they ask me to go there and to talk to them. And um, before they turn pro, and I said, well, if you're already new steroids, you might as well stop now. That is because you're already a loser, you know, so you're not going to make it because you're already insecure. That's why you're taking it. So you might as well stop now. And pain pills. Pain pills. I always say stay away from that. That is the worst stuff that they have here in America because it, it will hook you, you know. And once you start taking it in more than two or three weeks, like I said, there's only one way you're going and it's down. You will never go up. You never see anybody flourish anymore. It's going down. It's gone. 